In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started using Azure OpenAI, how you can set up the resource, and how you can play around with some of the features really quickly. Let's jump right in. So if we go to portal.azure.com, we can either come up to the search or you'll notice I've used it a fair amount, so it actually shows up here, but we can go to Azure OpenAI. Now, once we do that, we can actually create a resource. From here, you can pick your subscription. You can come on in and pick your resource group. I'm gonna go ahead and leave East US, but this is what is currently available. And then notice you give it a name. So I'm gonna do Dwalin test video or something along those lines that's unique. And then there's only one pricing tier as of today. That certainly may change, but be aware. Now from there, we can go ahead and hit next. I'm gonna select all networks and just leave the defaults here and on the tags. And let's go ahead and review and submit this. So we'll create it. All right, now that the deployment's done, we can go ahead and go to the resource. And there's a few things I wanna call out here. First off, you'll see the kind of standard suspects over here to the left, but on the right, notice that we have something called an endpoint. This is really, really important and something you're gonna use. In fact, if we go to keys and endpoint, you can also get the endpoint from here and you can get a key. And this is also something that we're gonna need. Now, from here though, you might wonder, okay, I've heard about GPT-3 and GPT-4 and all these different models that are available. How do I get to those? Well, you'll notice model deployments. Now, what this is gonna do is actually jump us over to Azure OpenAI Studio. So I'm gonna click on Manage Deployments. And now that I'm in Azure AI Studio, I'm gonna select my subscription, and then I'm gonna select this new resource, Dwalin Test Video. And we're gonna say, yeah, that's the one we wanna use. Now, from here, you'll notice that we don't have a deployment I wanna give you a quick overview of what's here though. You'll notice there's a chat playground. We have a completions playground. Bring your own data actually allows you to upload documents like Word documents, PowerPoint, Markdown, HTML, and more. And you can actually use GPT type functionality against those documents. And then uh, Dolly would be for image generation. Now what we're gonna do though is create a brand new deployment. So I'm gonna select that. That gets us to the deployment screen. We'll click create new deployment. And now we need to select what model do we want? Now I'm gonna go ahead and select GPT-35 Turbo. Of course, you need to pick what's appropriate for your scenario, but let's go ahead and pick this. And now what is the model version? Now this is important because if I pick the default here, that will work great. That's currently what I have access to. If you've applied for GPT-4 access, you might even see that. But if I wanted something like OpenAI function calling to be enabled, I'd need to make sure I select a model that supports it. Now, 0613 does, we're not gonna demo that here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick it. And then we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna say GPT-35 Turbo, and we'll say 0613 to be very specific on that version. And we'll hit create. And there we go, we now have a model created that we can actually use. We can select this model, get some information about it, tell you about the tokens, your rate limits, things like that. But now that we have that model in play, how do we actually do something with it? Well, let's go back here to where we were. So now what we can do is try this out. Let's go to completions. You're gonna notice that we have our model and then I can select some examples. And this is gonna give you some kind of starting prompts, if you will, that you could use. So let's do generate an email, but you'll see there's a lot of others out here. And this is about writing a product launch for some AI powered headphones, it looks like. One little tip here is if your model was just created, sometimes you might need to wait a few minutes for that to be fully deployed. We'll see what happens here since I'm actually doing this live in the video. Let's hit generate. And all right, so this is exactly what you'll see. The API deployment does not exist. If you created it within the last five minutes, please wait a moment and try again. So through the magic of video, I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward to where our model's created, and then we'll try this out. So let's try this again, and we might get another error, but let's see what happens here. So we'll generate, and look what happens. So it says that the model we selected isn't actually available with this completions playground. Now, at first you may be like, well, hey, you let me pick the model, what's the problem here? 
And it just turns out that because this is a very new one as of the time of recording anyway, it's just not supported yet. So what we can do is just go create another deployment. So we'll create one and we'll just use the standard turbo. But I'm going to go with the auto update to default. OK, now I could pick the default, but we'll do auto update. And let's just call this GPT 3.5 turbo and create it. OK, so now we have two models deployed. Now, this will take a sec to deploy again, so I'm going to go back to completions. But as I pick this new model, it may not work right away. So let's hit generate and you'll notice that we get the same time of error. So let me go ahead and wait a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and hit generate again. Looks like it's working this time. And it says, since this is a product launch email, please provide as much detail as possible. Then it starts to break this down. So notice now it's coming into, let's break this down to the audience. It's identifying the purpose of the email and uh, doing all kinds of fun stuff. But down here towards the bottom, we actually have uh, email structure and content, including a subject line, a salutation, the normal stuff that if you've used like ChatGPT or some of the other options out there, you've probably seen before. Now, there's a lot more we could do from here, of course. We could work with the chat playground. We could generate images, all kinds of fun things. But in the short time we have here, those are some of the main things I wanted to cover. Now, you're probably wondering, all right, great. That's nice that we have a playground, but how do I actually use this in my apps? Well, that'll be the subject of another video. So stay tuned, subscribe and like, please, and I'll see you in the next video.